Good morning. Welcome, everybody. We're glad that you're here today. We had a special day today, so things are not going to be like normal. We have our, our youth Mexico team, who just returned from Mexico two weeks ago, are going to share testimonies and a report of what God did in their lives and through them in Mexico in a few moments. So we want you to um, listen and be blessed by what they're going to share with you. We are also pleased to have Alvaro and Raquel Garriga here and their children, Daniel and Matias. And Alvaro is going to come in just a second and going to share with you about their ministry. Before he does that, I want to just draw your attention to the bulletin. There are lots of important things in there. One thing happening today, which is the Family Kids Ministry Meeting, which you read about that, and the Ice Cream Social, which is happening next Sunday. So next Sunday from 3.30 till 5. So. Please read along with me. Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his presence. Would you all stand and worship with us? Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me in, oh, his love. His love for me. Who the sun sets free, oh, is free indeed. I'm a child of God, yes, I am. Free at last, He has ransomed me, His grace runs. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, he died for me. Who the Son sets free, oh, is free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. In my Father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God, yes I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me not against me I am who you say I am I am chosen not forsaken I am who you say I am you are for me not against me I am who you say I am I am who you say I am sets free oh he's free indeed I'm a child of God yes I am in my father's house there's a place for me I'm a child of God Yes, I am In my Father's house 
There's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. will bow down and every chain will break as broken hearts declare his praise for who can stop the Lord Almighty our God is the Lion the Lion of Judah he's roaring with power you're fighting our battles and every knee will bow before him our god is the lamb the lamb that was slain for the sin of the world his blood breaks the chains and every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb and every knee I'll be for him. So open up the gates, make way before the King of Kings. A God who comes to save is here to set the captives free for who can stop the lord almighty our god is the lion the lion of judah he's roaring with power you're fighting our battles and every knee will bow before him our god the lamb the lamb that was slain for the sin of the world its blood breaks the chains and every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb and every knee will bow before him if who can stop the lord almighty who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? And our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before Him. And our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sin of the world. His blood breaks the chains. And every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. And every knee will bow before Him. Then I looked and heard the voice of many angels numbering thousands upon thousands and ten thousand times ten thousand. They encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders. In a loud voice they were saying, 
Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. the Lamb who was slain. Holy, holy is He. Sing a new song to Him who sits on heaven's mercy seat. Holy, holy is He. Sing a new song to Him who sits on heaven's mercy seat. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. of lightning, rolls of thunder, blessing and honor, strength and glory and power be to you, the only wise King. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything and I will adore you. with wonder, awestruck wonder, at the mention of your name. Jesus, your name is power, breath and living water, such a marvelous mystery. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you.
You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my all in all. Seeking you as a precious jewel. Lord, to give up, I'd be a fool. You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your sin my cross my shame rising again i bless your name you are my all in all when i fall down you pick me up and when i am dry you fill my cup you are my all in all precious jewel Lord to give up I'd be a fool you are my all in all you can be seated please pray with me Nothing else on earth can ever compare to your greatness, Lord. You're a jewel immeasurably more valuable than anything we know. You give life and bear our sin and shame. May our wonder and adoration of you never run dry. May we never stop seeking the only true treasure, the Almighty, Lamb of, Lo Lamb of God and King of Kings. Amen. Good morning. I am Kevin Looper. I've been the youth pastor here since 2013. And our youth group has been visiting Tijuana, Mexico uh, most years since 2005. I was actually a senior in high school that very first trip, 2005, and I was able to go, which was pretty cool. This year was a great trip. Uh, we had a great group, a group that didn't complain. In fact, before we got on the bus to leave for the airport, we made a vow to each other not to complain the whole week, and we did pretty well. Um, I'm going to give you a, a quick tour through our week. You know what? I've got to get this thing out. should have done that before. Let's see. There we go. Um, we, we arrived on Sunday. And we went out shopping and um, kind of rested. And on Monday, we went out to the dump. Uh, this is a picture of the dump. Um, we almost didn't get to hand out food this year at the dump. We almost didn't get in because groups before us from other churches, other mission organizations, had come and taken a bunch of pictures. And they really frowned on that. They, they shut the dump for a couple months. And... Um, we were able to get in last minute, and we went in, we handed out burritos uh, and snow cones and things like that to the people there. 
Um, this is a picture actually from 2019 that our tour guide Carlos took. And this is our group, um, but it was a couple years before. And the dump is incredibly warm. Um, you can see that it's kind of on a plateau of a mountain and it's completely exposed, exposed to the sun. And there's no grass, there's no trees, the wind is constantly blowing around, the smell of trash is constantly in your nose. And um, the, place, the place contains the garbage of more than two million people. They don't bury it like we do, you know, it's, it's just out there and there are hundreds of adults sifting through it looking for metal to sell to, you know, make a livelihood. And I would say from what Carlos has told me that most of the people there are addicted to drugs. Uh, it's, a, it's a very dark place. People rarely escape from the dump. And I would say most people don't want to escape from the dump. It's a life that they've come to know. And despite how sunny it is there, and it's always sunny there, uh, it's a very dark place. Very dark place. And I think it's pretty cool, though, that our group is able to go into a place like this and do something good, where good things rarely happen. Um, it's, it's small, we're handing out food, but it's a testament to the fact that God is good to everyone, everywhere, all the time. God cares about every single person on earth, even those people in the dump. The next day, Tuesday, we went to the orphanage. Um, the orphanage that we went to is called La Roca, which is the rock in English. Um, orphanages, the ones that we go to, are well run run by Christian people who take care of their kids. They're not the type where you see someone with a diaper that hasn't been changed for weeks or anything like that. They, they actually take care of their kids. In this orphanage, there are about 15 kids from babies to teenagers. And what I noticed about the orphans from my limited perspective is that they seemed happy and they seemed socially present, which if you go into the public schools like I do, you don't see that a lot here. A lot of the kids here, a lot of the teenagers here, are undergoing extreme battles of anxiety, depression, social confusion. Almost all of them are addicted to technology. And it was interesting that a bunch of orphans down there seemed so different. This first picture here was uh, some of us stayed upstairs and played little games with the younger ones. We had to wear masks the whole week because they were on uh, orange instead of green, whatever that means. But uh, everywhere we went in Tijuana, we had to wear masks. This next picture, you can see Eric playing monster with a few of the little kids. Uh, a lot of us went downstairs. They had this cool little setup, and we played, you know, through Frisbee, through kick soccer balls with the older ones. And then, this is not at the orphanage. We drove a few minutes and had a big soccer game with the orphans, and they destroyed us. It was pretty sad. <laughs> They're really good. Um, Next day, we went on a, on a, a house, build, uh, house build day. This was Wednesday. And we spent about eight hours there building a very small house for a man named Ahil and his daughter. So he was, he was staying in a homeless shelter before, and, um, before we built him this place. And you can see there, there's Molly and Paige. They're helping with the cutting of the wood. There, we're building the frames for the house. Every, almost everyone has a job to do even though it's a small house, because we do it old school. Hammer, nails, you know, everybody grabs a hammer and some nails and starts pounding. There we're lifting up uh, the side of the house, putting up the first wall. It's actually a really beautiful place. And there's, to be, in my opinion, there's not that many beautiful places in Tijuana, but there's, there was flowers everywhere, it was on a hill. It was, it was nice, nice trees. That's us trying to move the house. We actually moved the house to center it on its foundation. Next day, this is Thursday, we did what's called an activity day or a community outreach day. We went to a new neighborhood we'd never been to, out by the dump. Many of the people who live there in this community are people who work in the dump. Some people live in the dump, but these people came back to this place. And um, it's interesting that nobody's doing anything on a Thursday. <laughs> you can just go around to door to door and you get a huge crowd of people. You couldn't do that in the States. But, we went around door to door telling people there was an activity day. Hadn't heard, heard it before, and then they all came out, tons of people. And um, our group did a lot of the work. We ran kids games. We uh, handed out food and uh, vegetables and clothes and stuff like that to the people. All, all the while, 
a pastor from a local church there went around and met people, made connections, and invited people to his church, which that's Spectrum's big thing because of Matt, is trying to connect people to churches, not just doing good things for them, but connecting them to God through the church. This, this is a picture of Susie here playing games with the kids. Uh, you can see me and Kylie there handing out uh, clothes and food. The clothes that we were giving and the clothes that people were taking were worse than the kind of clothes you'd find at Goodwill, for sure, but people still wanted them. Uh, it was super hot that day, and so we played water games, and it was kind of nice for us, too. You can see they got pretty wet. And this girl was so cute. We had to include this. Uh, it's, she's hitting a pinata that we had set up um, for them after, after it was all done. Friday, we had a kids club um, that we helped set up for and run. Uh, Spectrum has its own children's minister who's really good at what he does. His name's Palau. And we went uh, to this very poor neighborhood out, just outside of Tijuana. And there's hills everywhere, and there's like shacks with tarps and rubber tires for steps and stuff like very poor place and it what my thought was is in the united states we have a completely different definition of what poverty is than what these people do um but tons of parents and kids especially kids came out to this place and palau shared the gospel with the kids he also had a little message about how they should stay in school most kids don't make it to high school there and if you just graduate high school you, can, you have so many opportunities in Tijuana. And so he was trying to encourage them. The reason why they don't, though, is because they have to drop out of school to take care of their families, to start working, things like that, just to survive. Um, here's a picture of us, uh, Eric, there, lining up kids, kids' games. We played mostly games with them during this time. Um, there's us playing sharks and minnows. The kids were the minnows, and we were the sharks, and we caught them, and it was, there was a lot of laughing and playing. There's Palau there with a bunch of kids. Um, they, have, they look ridiculous because they have Oreos on their faces and they're trying to get the Oreo from their forehead to their mouth. And we, we served them ice cream sundaes afterwards and I don't think any of them refused any toppings, is that right? <laughs> they, they took it all, they piled it on. Um, Saturday in the morning we went and laid cement, which is pretty tough work. We laid a foundation for the next group to come in Oh, if there is a group, for the next house to be built. Um, they have a little cement mixer there that we used, but we, ha we had to do the loading with sand and gravel and water and by hand, put them in buckets, and then cart them over with a wheelbarrow and level the foundation. Um, it was hard work, it was super dirty, and they didn't complain, um, so, which was great. And you should be proud of how hard our teenagers worked. Um, there we are leveling the foundation. After that, we went to the Cooey's house in Rosarito. They live by the beach, um, by the ocean. And so um, we went to the ocean, ate some pizza, Matt gave a devotional, and there's the whole team right there with the addition of Audrey Cooey in the yellow or green sweatshirt. I can't tell what color it is. Um, but she went around with us most places too, which was fun. So every night of the week, we, we had a little devotional back at the um, dorm. And the theme I chose this year was about wealth and poverty. Every time that I've gone to Mexico, the teenagers have just been in awe of how poor people are, how little they have by comparison to us. And their immediate reaction in places like the dump is to feel sorry for the people who are there. One of the things that I tried to stress is that more money and more possessions does not equal a better life. If we're going to feel sorry for people, it should not be because they don't have a nice house or nice clothes, it should be because they don't have Jesus. Jesus spent his ministry with people just like the poor people that we met in Tijuana. Luke records this one event where he was coming down from a mountain after praying all night and this huge crowd of people surrounds him, and many of them are sick and paralyzed, and some of them had demons. Most of them were uneducated, oppressed, harassed. They were small in their own eyes. And Jesus looks out at all these people, and he said, Blessed are the poor, 
for theirs is the kingdom of heaven, or the kingdom of God in Luke. Blessed just means happy. It just means fortunate. It means well off. Things are good for them. I'm convinced that Jesus could have gone to the dump and said those same things to those people. Blessed are you in the dump, for yours is the kingdom of, of God. How could people in the dump be blessed? How could they be well off? It's not because they're poor. Poverty is an evil thing. Its effects are things like addiction and prostitution and child slavery. People are not blessed because they're poor. They're blessed because theirs is the kingdom of God. They are blessed because God is where they are and they can start living their lives with him and for him right now. That is the good news. That is the only good kind of life there is to live, and you can live it whether you're in a mansion or in a shack. And sometimes I think it might be easier to live that kind of with God and for God life when you're in a shack rather than in a mansion. This is a message that we need to share too, especially with our family, with our neighbors, who are so discontent and happy with their lives, even though they have so many nice things. Everyone is blessable if they enter into the kingdom. That is, if they start living their life with God as their father and for God as their master. As Americans, our great wealth has blinded us to our terrible spiritual poverty. Because we've spent our lives running after money We've missed out on true riches. Things like faith, wisdom, love, fellow believers. That's what true riches are. It makes sense now why Jesus says it's hard for the rich to inherit the kingdom of God. But when it comes down to it, no matter where people are or how much money they have, everyone desperately needs Jesus. They're living in terrible poverty and in squalor without him. Thank God, who gave us his one and only son so that we might live our lives through him as a gift. And we can share that great gift with the world. And we were able to do that this last week, or three weeks ago. Thank you for your support. Thank you for sending us. You're always so faithful to our youth and I appreciate it. We're gonna have some, some of our youth come up and share a little bit of their experience with us. So Jaron, come on up. Good morning. My name is Jaron Mullins. Um, I'd like to start off by thanking everyone for the support and encouragement and the prayer for me and the team. Uh, this year was a good year, and it was a successful trip. Um, I believe that everyone on the team learned a lot. I know that I personally did. On Thursday, I helped with the water games. We were probably there for about an hour and a half um, when Mom and Nelson and Sarah went to get water for the team. When they gave me my bottle, some of the people were asking for the water. Uh, I gave mine to a lady who had asked for it, but I was told that uh, we had a limited amount and not to give too much away. When everything started to settle down and the end of our time with the people was nearing, I ate my lunch on a bench off to the side with the water underneath the bench. After probably 20 seconds of sitting there, um, a lot of people just came over and they were asking me, to hand out water. So I handed out what was, what was there, and something um, stuck out to me. It turned out there was more people asking for the water than there actually was water. So uh, a little boy, who couldn't have been older than two, was standing there looking at me as I was telling everybody that I was sorry and that I didn't have any more. And I, I looked at him. And he turned away with a sad face and walked off. 
Now every day I can go to a filtered faucet and get water whenever I want. Um, sometimes I get tired of water or I just don't want it. Uh, but these people were actually asking for it. Um, but I didn't just learn to be grateful. Uh, I realized that chances were that this boy, these people, needed uh, God's flowing river of abundant love and mercy and righteousness. Through this, I was reminded of John 4, verses 13 and 14, which says, Jesus answered, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become a, become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. With what I already had, I wasn't able to satisfy these people's needs. And like Jesus says, they will be thirsty again anyway. Um, only he can provide their everlasting needs. I don't know why this boy stuck out to me in particular. I don't know why God chose this for me to experience, but I will never forget it. Thank you. Hi, um, I'm Kylie Young, and this was my second trip going to Mexico. And since it was my second trip, I had a very, very high expectations on this trip because the first one was so great. I went, not a single one was met. This trip was very hard for me, but not in the way most people think. I did a lot of growing in this trip, and it was a lot of me realizing I don't physically have to be doing something 24-7. I went on this trip and was expecting so much emo emotion and realizing how lucky I have it here. And yes, I do have it very lucky here and I'm so grateful for everything I have, but I didn't have that emotion like I did the first time. And so on the first day we went to the dump, like Kevin said, and that was such an impactful day for me last time I went. And this time it was so, it was different. I went there and I was expecting to be so upset and feel so sorry for everyone. But I went there and it was like I was, it was reality for me. Not that I lived that life, but that I seen it every day. And I was kind of okay with that. I didn't feel sorry for them. Like, I felt bad that they lived in that situation. But that day was very discouraging to me. And I thought something was wrong. The next day we went to the orphanage and I felt that exact same way. And so Tuesday night, Megan and Solomon Guzman stopped by the house. And for some reason, I don't know what happened, I opened up to Megan about that, and I was not planning on telling a single person. And she told me that it's maybe because God wants me to focus on helping people in Mexico and the people who are new on the team, and not focus on my emotion. And in that moment, it was so encouraging to me, and I was like, you know what? She's probably right. Like, that is probably why I'm here and why I'm feeling like this. Next day, I woke up. All that encouragement was gone, and I felt so discouraged and I was back in that little slump. So Thursday was the most impactful day for me, so we went to do the neighborhood outreach. And so me and Kevin were under a tent, handing out basically um, clothes and food and stuff like that. And for the most part of it, me and Kevin were just standing there doing nothing. We don't speak Spanish, and the people under that tent knew what to do. And so we were just kind of standing there watching them. And I was getting so mad at myself, and I was so upset, and I was in this spiral of thinking, why am I here? I'm doing nothing. It doesn't matter if I'm here or in the van. Nothing would change. I'm not doing anything. And I would look off at the other people who went on the team and were very, like helping with the kids, playing with the kids, doing face paint, and I was like, why can't I be like them? They're actively doing something and showing God's love. And it was to the point where I was almost in tears because I was so mad at myself. And I genuinely thought in that time, I wasted my time. I wasted my Thursday nights and my Saturday mornings doing service projects. But after we were done with that line, and after the people got done getting their things, the guy who was leading the tent asked me and Kevin to go grab boxes from the van. So we had empty boxes. And I was walking there, and I was so mad. And I was to the point where I was just ready to be done. But I heard God speak to me for the first time ever. 
He said, Kylie, you are here in my name, and that is enough. And in that moment, I felt so much guilt, but so much relief. And I've never felt like that before. And I was like, I was kind of guilty because it was like, God, you gave me everything, and now I'm complaining that I'm doing nothing. And it's, it was so great, and I can never explain it. But right when we got back from getting those boxes for that tent, I started actively doing something. I started handing out potatoes. And it was overall, it was a hard week, like I said, but overall I would not change what happened. Um, I just wanna thank you all for giving me this opportunity to go to Mexico. And you guys have always been so grateful and very helpful. And it was a very hard week, but it was well worth it. But Jesus was with us in Mexico. And we read that here now. And Matthew, Matthew 18, 20 said, For we are two or three gathered in my name, here I am with them. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Garrett Thorne. This, was, uh, this is my first time going on the trip. And uh, I had a really great time. I really... Uh, um, really enjoyed the guides that were with us. Uh, we had help from Danny and Arturo and Alejandro and a bunch of other people, and they were just really funny guides who uh, helped us through this trip. And uh, one of the, my main most impactful moments was uh, my experience with another guide, Carlos. Uh, I didn't know it at the time, but Kevin signed me up to go on a car ride with Carlos on the day we went to the dump. And Carlos is really big on asking questions uh, the entire ride, so he fills all the air, and he really makes you question your faith, and um, he wants to get to know you and like your walk with God. And uh, it was a long car ride, and he asked a lot of hard questions, and he really helped clear up a, a big issue I've always had with my faith, was the idea that uh, God could condemn his children to hell. And he explained to me that there's a difference between God's children and God's creation. And um, so as we were going to the dump, he explained to me, he was like, the, these people at the dump, they are um, God's creation. And he's offering them, even though they're poor now, he's offering them uh, heaven and the kingdom after death. And it's their choice to make that. And whether or not a person chooses to believe in God and all that is their free will. And... Uh, so he's not condemning people to hell. He is, he's offering the choice, and people condemn themselves. So there's the difference between the people. Like, like he, he loves you as a son. You know, like if you offer yourself to Jesus, you are his, 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 his child. You are God's children, and he loves you like that. And he loves you no matter what because you're his creation, but there is a difference. And that was really impactful for me, and that was really great to hear, and it changed my outlook that I always had. And uh, I, would, I would just like to share a verse with you that goes along with this too. Um, Romans chapter 8, verses 14 through 15. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit you received does not make you slaves, so that you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. Thank you. To a good start. Hi, Lockwood family. My name is Waylon Young, and this was my first trip, first time on this trip, and it was truly life-changing for me. The orphanage was the biggest eye-opener for me. Most of these kids grew, are from a rough part of the city. Others were given up or lost by their parents. The age range is from infant to 18 years old, but one thing remains. They are all children of God, and God created them for him. In Psalm 68, 5 through 6, it says, A father to the fatherless, a defender of widows. Is God in his holy dwelling? God sets the loneliness in family, and he leads the prisoners with singing. But the rebell rebellious live in a sun-scorched land. I would like to thank my parents for adopting me and my sister when we were younger. Thank you for always taking me to my baseball games when I was younger, or for listening to my crazy ideas. They always loved me even when I do something dumb, and I took their love for granted before Mexico. I saw kids there that didn't have a mother-father connection, and it, it truly hurt. 
I would like to thank my mom for being my rock, being there whether it's taking me to specialty appointments in Ann Arbor or just being someone I can talk to. I love you, Mom and Dad, and thank you, Lockwood, for giving me this opportunity to go on this life-changing trip. Thank you. Hi, I'm Carol Nelson, a.k.a. Mama. It's been my privilege and joy, really, to be the chief cook and bottle washer for several years. Uh, one of my hidden talents gets a lot of use on these trips. I can be very loud. So in addition to saying shh over and over, I yell, pay attention, do this, do that. And then listen to the bearded one phrase of this year goes to embrace the mystery. Yeah. <laughs> they got tired of us saying that. The kids are forever asking, when? Why? What time? What's next? And especially this year, with the adults, we didn't know. They, so when we got a schedule for how the week was going to go, and then when we got there, it was completely changed. Embrace the mystery. When the water was shut off, four evenings in a row, and no one complained, hallelujah. Embrace the mystery. Not being in control. Don't we hate that feeling? And yet, welcome to life. We're never truly in control. God is. Jesus is in control. We can trust him. He is totally good. He's the good shepherd, our good leader. His word tells us the main things we need to do. But can we completely understand him and his ways? <laughs> nope. Colossians 2, 2 and 3 says, My goal is that they may be encouraged in heart and united in love so that they may have the full riches of complete understanding in order that they may know the mystery of God, namely Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. He's a mystery to us, and so is our future, but we can totally embrace the mystery. I want to invite you now to pray for these guys. So they've done this. Now they're going to go do other things, right? And f for all of you, the impact of the trip sort of wanes as you go out into life and do your other things. However, God's going to use this trip in you, and we're going to pray that he does so that he can work through you in the future including in our church family, because we need you. All right, so would you pray with me for them now? Heavenly Father, I thank you for what you've done and for your faithfulness to us over the years and, and all of these trips to Tijuana. I pray for these students that the insights that they have had will be part of a, a transformation of mind in which your truth becomes the guiding light for them. I pray that the changes that have happened in their hearts as they've made decisions to be faithful to you will be established and become part of who they are. I ask you to use them in our lives because we need to be challenged and encouraged and helped as well. Thank you for the work you've done there in Tijuana. Cause it to bear fruit. And Lord, would you do a miracle so that what was planted in Tijuana will also bloom in cold water. And we ask you to do this in the name of Jesus. Amen. A couple of announcements. There are offering plates in the back. 
So if you are giving an offering today, you can just place that as you go. There is a card for Pauline Ely, who is turning 90 in a couple weeks out there, and we want to say happy birthday to her. So if you see that right on the table as you walk out the center door, you can say happy birthday to her. That would be fantastic. And then I want you to stand with me. I'm going to ask, oh, we're, we're going to have a prayer helper up here. So if you have a prayer need in your life, feel free to come on up and pr we'll pray with you. Uh, Alvaro and Raquel have gone out, but I'd encourage you to find them. They're going to be here for a few weeks, and you could have a chance. We have a sign-up sheet out here at the information table for meeting with the Garrigas. Maybe have them over for dessert or go out to dinner with them. Or get to know them better. These are people who are serving the Lord and are representing his church, including us, in a difficult place, be an encouragement to them. So they're out here in the lobby. Go find uh, Raquel and Alvaro. And I want to leave you with this word of promise from our Lord Jesus. Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scriptures have said, Rivers of living water will flow from within him. By this he meant the Spirit, whom those who believed on him were later to receive. Lord, send us out in the power of your Spirit, and in the name of Jesus, bring glory to yourself and extend your kingdom. Amen.